Merry Christmas, West Hills Church. We continue our daily devotions for a few more days all the way up until Christmas. So from December 1st, we've been doing these to December 25th. And so we are getting close. And today I share with you about one of the characters in the Bible um, in the Christmas story that most of us don't know a lot about. And so here's my challenge just for a second. Um, if you're in a room with people or by yourself, what do you know about Zechariah? Uh, what do you know about Zechariah? Right now, just write it down, say it out loud, whatever, however you want to do it. Just what can you come up with in 10 seconds? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, time's up. Uh, what do you know about Zechariah? I don't, we don't know a lot about him typically if you ask that question of people. Um, but he was a priest. He was a very important priest. Um, he had some, um, some clout, if you will, um, that he was a part of the line of Aaron. And so uh, he was not just any priest. Um, he, he had quite a bit of prestige and power and authority. Uh, and yet we, we read in the story that Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, um, I guess sad is, is the right word. They were older in age, much like Abraham and Sarah. They were older in age um, and, and they were, remained childless. They wanted to have children and they were unable to do so. And kind of to tell the story quickly as we read in Luke, um, an angel appears, Gabriel appears, and begins to speak to Zechariah, and he says to him that you're that you're going to have a child, and your child's going to um, be very very important um, as he leads the way for the coming Messiah. And so Gabriel gives all of this information um, to Zechariah. The angel tells Zechariah, and, and and Zechariah's response is, "How shall I know this to be true? How am I going to know this to be fact? Or how can I believe this?" Really is what he's asking the question. And so Zechariah gives some explanation. He says, basically, because you didn't believe me with my initial words, then you're not going to be able to talk. And so he renders him mute, um, unable to talk from that point forward. And so we fast forward to the story and, um, and we find out that Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth are, uh, do have a child. And um, throughout that entire time, he was unable to speak, unable to talk. People knew that he'd had a vision or seen an angel or seen something um, that was quite remarkable there in the temple. And so they're trying to decide the name for Zechariah, at, I mean, excuse me, the, Zechariah, the name for Zechariah's child after he was born. And Gabriel had told him what to name him in John. Elizabeth knew it to be John. And yet when it was time to circumcise him and name the child, um, they were all assuming it'd be basically, essentially, Zeki Jr., Zechariah Jr. Um, and, and so Elizabeth said, no, we want to name him John. And they go to Zechariah. And Zechariah says, give me a tablet. And he gets a tablet and he writes his name. His name will be, his name will be John. Um, it's in that moment, as he's given the name John, that was given by God to Zechariah, that he's finally able to speak again. And what's interesting is they had longed for a child, and they were blessed with a child. It was an answer to prayer, um, a prayer that they'd been praying for some time. Um, and then Zechariah has this prophecy, or I like to think of this Zechariah song, much like Mary's song, that we read about in Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through, through 79. And he just begins to express himself after being mute for, for so long. Um, and, and what's interesting, though, in his song is it's it, it, it certainly it could have been about him. It could have been about his son, John. Um, but his song is not about John and his song is not about Zechariah and Elizabeth. But and, and even though their their prayers had been met, the, the song is about God and his work and his redemption and his mercy, uh, which is so fitting during the Christmas story. So many miracles are going on. So many remarkable things are happening. Um, their specific need was being met, and Zechariah pointed everyone to the Lord. And this is what their son John would do, that John would pave a way. It was never going to be about John, but it was about John pointing the way to the coming Messiah, Jesus. Um, and so it's fitting that Zechariah would be the father um, uh, to, to John. And, and he says in his song, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And certainly that's what we celebrate during this Christmas season, is that, that God would send his one and only son, and that he would send him... Uh, to, to be man and God, ultimately to redeem uh, his people. What a powerful message. And, and so I think the call, the challenge is that we would follow Zechariah's example and, and focus on Jesus uh, this season. That even though we have our own needs and wants and, 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 and gifts and uh, all kinds of things are going on and, and legitimate prayer concerns, legitimate struggles and concerns and all of that. Um, but even in the midst of all of that, um, let's remember uh, to focus on God and his redemptive plan. Let's pray together and, uh, and then I will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for being the God who loves us, um, that cares about us and, and that you answer our prayers and meet our needs and provide for us and love us and walk with us and have compassion uh, for us. 
But even in the midst of all of that, as we seek you and, and we seek your help and, and, and to meet our needs and to provide for us, Father, I pray that we would never lose sight, um, that our lives are intended to be dedicated to you, that we're called to worship you. And so I pray you would help us during this season um, that seems to be all about friends and family, but but truly it's a season to celebrate you and your um, your redemptive plan to rescue man from their sin. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. So I pray that we will we'll think on Jesus, especially the next couple of days as we make our way towards Christmas, uh, that we would consider him and think on him as we move forward together uh, as his church. God bless. Love you. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.